I've got my project model here that's opened. And I've been doing some modeling work on some site elements inside of this model. And I did them as model in place elements, not because that's the best way to do it, but whenever you're dealing with existing conditions, increasingly architects and designers are using point clouds to aid in their design. So in this case, I've actually done a laser scan all the way around the house. And I can turn that on if I go to visibility graphics. It adds a tab for point clouds after you have uh, added that or inserted that into your project. And I can check this on to make it visible. Hit apply and OK. It's a bit overwhelming. I've got an incredible amount of data here. I've got uh, just millions of points, X, Y, Z, uh, that have been created. And it allows you to model extremely complicated pieces, such as this handrail here. Now, this handrail had to be done as model in place. Now, I've actually already done the trick that I'm going to show you here, and you can tell that this is not model in place now. This is actually an inserted family. You can see that in the type selector. But it started as a model in place element because I could not create this in the family editor with the slightly off axis direction that it has and with the detail that's been created in the offsets and the angling on this rail. You're, you're just not going to be able to create a railing family in the uh, system family that is able to handle uh, these kinds of geometry differences, but you can create extrusions precisely where those spindles and, and posts and rails occur and then export those simple extrusions out of Revit as a family, a .rfa file. And from there you would be able to uh, create or reinsert it, which is what I've done here. We're actually going to repeat the same process with another site element that I've created here. This is my electrical uh, transformer here that services both my house and my neighbor's house. And I've created it as just a couple of extrusions. We have the main box body and then we have this cover lid. One of the really cool things about, um, you know, about these point clouds now is that you've got these RGB values. You can actually read, almost read the warning. I could actually create a label uh, for the warning and then the visibility strip that alternates uh, white and yellow striping there. Uh, and so we want to double check that we've actually modeled this to you know within like an inch of where these things actually occur and so i might actually go to a site plan and from the site plan i can cut a section which i did just a moment ago and then we can open up that section and actually see an array of points now there's not an incredible amount of them and i'm not seeing uh, to infinity and beyond this because I've actually very smartly uh, shortened up my section depth. If I include all of the slab, then it actually is going to create a bit of a fuzzy edge here because it's including extra, you know, a couple of thousand of points here. And it makes it uh, a little bit more difficult to choose the exact path that this follows. It includes things like the lock and the, uh, the, the key and the hasp and the things that are going over top of that. So let me shorten up the section just a little bit more. That's about a three or four inch uh, deep section of points. And if we select our extrusion, we can see that it actually is not plumb. You know, so we've, we've kind of got this corner correct, but it tapers inside. Let me take a quick measurement here. That is, oh, let's say just over half an inch, about five eighths of an inch can't. Uh, towards the inside. I'm going to let that fly, uh, even though I can see it's also repeating here. We're going to go ahead and take this geometry and extrude it because we might uh, want to utilize the geometry that we've created here in future projects. We're going to go to visibility graphics of EG and we're going to turn back off the point cloud. All right, and from this view, what we need to do is create a group of these elements. Now, don't just grab this and, uh, and, and try to group it from there. The main part of this trick is you actually have to in, enter the editing mode for the object. So you can select it or double click it, or you can select this edit in place. And it will gray out the rest of the model. And you don't want to take that one more step. You don't want to grab you know, a piece like this 
and choose to edit, you know, extrusion or whatever it is. If you're seeing sketch lines, you've gone too far. So just back out to where you were able to select, and, and you should, window across all of the objects that you've created, all of the geometry that you've created, so that it's blue. And then we're going to choose this Create Group button up here. Call it Transformer. Uh, we'll call it Residential Transformer. Okay, we'll choose OK. And you can see it's created a group. It puts that recognizable dashed outline cube around the objects uh, that are in that group. Without exiting this, stay inside of your editing mode here. I can tell I've got this check in an X here. So while I'm still in this mode, we're going to go up to File, Save As, Library, Group. This is the trick. And I would say that only about 1% of Revit users that I know are aware of this trick. So we choose to save this out as a group. If we check the list here, I've only got one group in this project. So it actually, uh, you know, is able to find that. But if you've got several groups already created, you could select it from there. You could choose to leave it with the same exact name. So it would call it uh, residential transformer dot RFA. Or if I wanted to more specifically name it, I could type in a different name up here. I'm just going to choose uh, to put it on the desktop and say save. And I believe that I have just saved out a .rfa file called residential transformer.rfa on my desktop. Let me jump over and verify that. Look at me go. Residential transformer.rfa. So from within Revit here, we can open this up. And there it is. So it is already here. We can look at it from plan view. And at this point, we can start to create reference planes and start to lock geometry to that, maybe to control the overall width and height. We might change the insertion point so it's not in the center of the geometry. You can tell that it's automatically defaulted to making that insertion point the centroid of all of the geometry. But we could change that to a corner or make other changes to this. So then after you have this .rfa file, uh, then you are able to save it and load it into a project and you can actually load it right back into your active project and place it in exactly the same spot. So you can align it corner to corner and then we no longer need this uh, item grouped anymore. We could ungroup it. And after you have your model on top of it, you can select and you can tell it's model in place because it has all the arrows, <laughs> each of the edges of geometry. Then you can delete that once you have the replacement on top of it. And voila, you have a .rfa family in place rather than a, a parametric one, if you, if you want to go that route, rather than a model in place conglomerate of geometry. Thanks. I hope this helps. It should open up a lot of new avenues for you guys to be able to do model in place accurate geometry uh, according to point clouds or just in general inside of your projects.